everybody and welcome back to another video. Johnny D here. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at a recent release from AMD. Here we have the Ryzen 5 8400F. Now the 8400F was released back in April of 2024. The F stands for no integrated graphics or rather it's been turned off. Now the 8400F comes in at a price point of $169 US. This price point makes it interesting because it comes in $20 less than the Ryzen 5 7600. It might be tantalizing, but the 8400F comes with some drawbacks. So the question is, should you buy this chip? So let's take a look. I think the best way to do this is to compare the 8400F specs with the Ryzen 5 7600. I'm just going to point out some of the restrictions. I'm not going to go through every spec but I will point out some of the drawbacks. Now, the 8400F only comes with 16 megabytes of L3 cache, so it's been cut in half, whereas 7600 comes with 32 megabytes. The 8400F only supports PCIe 4.0, whereas the 7600 supports 5.0. Now here's where it gets interesting. Total Total usable PCIe lanes is 20 and 16 compared to 28 and 24. Now, what does that mean? Now, that means that the 8400F will only support 8 PCIe lanes on your graphics card, as opposed to the 7600 supporting all 16 lanes. That may cut down your performance. Also, there's no integrated graphics, so that may or may not be important to you. With all these restrictions, what kind of performance can you expect? So let's compare two graphics cards using an 8400F and a 13600K build. First, let's do an apples to apples comparison. Let's take a look at the RX 7600 XT. Now, this card is designed to run on PCI 4x8, so we will get all the performance we can out of it in the 8400F and the 13600K. So let's take a look. First up, we have Forza Horizon 5 at 1440p. The RX 7600 XT performs quite well. Uh, on medium settings, you have 181 to 184 FPS with the i5 taking the lead. And as we go down, high ultra extremes, they're pretty much even. So that tells us that the GPU that tells us that we are GPU limited, which is a good thing, getting about the same performance. Moving on to Cyberpunk, we see much the same, that the 13600K and the 8400F are getting about the same FPS out of the RX 7600 XT. So 118 to 120 on high, 86 to 88 on ultra, and 34 to 35 on ray tracing ultra. Moving on to F123, 1440p, we see much the same. Medium settings, the i5 is getting 249 versus the 8400F at 232. High settings, 153 to 147, and ultra, 41 to 40. So not much of a difference there. Now let's see what happens when we switch out the GPU for a 7800 XT, which requires 16 lanes, or runs on 16 lanes rather than 8. We'll see what kind of a difference we get. Okay, first up we have Forza Horizon 5, we are at 1440p. Now we're starting to see a major difference. So at medium settings, the 13600K achieved 240 frames per second, and the Ryzen 5 8400F only achieved 197. And you see much the same as we go up in settings, 229, 191, 178 to 154, 156 to 136. So this is where that lack of L3 cache and only having 8 PCI lanes really, really handicaps this CPU. Moving on, uh, F123, we see much of the same. The 13600K had 412 FPS on high settings as opposed to 376. Ultra settings, 327 for the 13600K as opposed to 271, and then ray tracing ultra, 108 frames per second as opposed to uh, 75. And then we have Assassin's Creed. Now the, the gap closes here in Assassin's Creed Mirage, uh, 1080p. 
the 13600K on high settings was at 185, and the A400F came in at 181, and then 156 to 149 on very high, and then 145 to 138 on ultra. So I guess it really depends on the game. Um, but you will see in some games a major difference in performance. So before we go over my final thoughts, I'm going to throw up some benchmarks because I did benchmark like four different graphics cards. So I'll put them up in the background as we go over our final thoughts. So this one was a tough one. Uh, the 8400F, it's, uh, it's not a bad CPU, but it's not a great CPU. I think there's too many handicaps. Uh, the L3 cache cut in half to 16 gigabytes doesn't support PCI Gen 5. That seems to be an issue. And then only running on eight PCI lanes. Now, if you're running like a 4060 Ti or a 7600 or 7600 XT, you're fine. You'll get great performance. But as soon as you go up to a 16 lane card, you probably will run into some performance issues. Uh, so it, it's a tough one. I mean, for $20, I almost think it's not worth it. I would just buy the 7600. The Ryzen 5 7600, uh, you won't have to worry. So uh, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. What do you think about this? Is it worth buying? I personally, eh, it's a soft pass for me on this one. I would just go with the 7600. Uh, curious to know. Let me know in the comments below. So with that said, if you like what I'm doing, hit that thumbs up. If you really like what I'm doing, why not subscribe so you get notified when I create new content. And with that said, you all have a great day, and thanks for watching. Bye now.